Hey guys, Michael Volshinovich here for RGG EDU. We've been shooting uh, some great images for the last three days and just want to give you a little glimpse into what some of the retouching is going to look like. So uh, it's just going to be a small preview. Obviously, uh, we've got hours and hours of retouching footage for you uh, in the full series. Uh, so we're going to start off with this look that we shot uh, during actually a live broadcast um, on day three. And um, so we're going to take this and basically it's a test look so we want to not overdo it. Uh, so we're not going to do a ton of processing on it. What we're mostly going to be doing is just going in, uh, adjusting some of the exposure, making sure the raw file, uh, we're essentially getting everything we can out of the raw file. And then we're just going to take it into Photoshop and do some color grading on it. So uh, we're in Capture One. It's what we've been shooting to over the last three days. Um, I've really enjoyed actually working with this raw processor. Um, I'll definitely have some more insights for you as far as Capture One versus uh, Lightroom in the near future. But um, so far, definitely a worthwhile checking out, especially if you're shooting tethered. So basically we're gonna go in here and we're gonna just start playing with our exposure and um, highlight and shadow settings. So the original image, um, you know, we couldn't really light it much more than this because then the skin would start to overexpose in certain areas. So uh, we were relying on the ability to pull out some more detail out of the raw file. And so we're just gonna do that. Um, I can probably nudge this exposure up a tiny bit. Uh, and as you can see, as I start to push it even a quarter of a stop or a 10th of a stop, it's starting to kind of get to the point where it's a little bit too bright. So we're just gonna go up one, one tenth here not one, just one tenth, there we go. Uh, and then um, we're going to maybe recover some of the highlight detail now, just a little bit. And we really wanna pull out some shadow detail because we have these black shoes and black shorts that um, are really you know, sucking up the light as well as some of the detail in her hair. So we wanna get that back before we actually get into Photoshop. So we're just gonna crank up our shadow detail here and we can see that really opening up. It looks a lot better uh, on her hair. We've got a lot more detail to work off of there. So. Um, that should be a pretty good starting point as far as shadows go. Let's just make sure that everything's looking good as far as our white balance. So we're gonna go in here. In white balance, uh, we've got a neutral gray background, so we're gonna just use that as our white balance source. Uh, we're just gonna click down, and that's just gonna make a slight adjustment here. We can see that it has changed uh, the Kelvin and the tint just a little bit. We can see that um, the tint has been adjusted, so I'm just gonna play with it a little bit to see whether or not I'm actually happy with that. Usually after it makes the adjustment, I just like to verify that you know it, it looks the way I actually want it to look. So I think it was actually pretty good. I'm gonna leave it at about 4.0, uh, which is close to where the original was. Uh, we can do some of this color editing directly within um, capture one here using this little color editor, uh, which we'll be playing with a little bit more as we kind of go through. But uh, for now, we're actually gonna do more of our uh, color grading inside of Photoshop. So we're gonna get this into Photoshop now. The way we do that is we go into the file menu, which is actually in my other display here. So you probably won't be able to see it right now, but you go into file and there's an export option. So you go to export variants and you'll get this little pop-up over here. So basically what this is asking you to specify is just um, you know, specify a destination folder that you want to out output the actual PSD to, uh, what your file name format's gonna be, uh, whether it's PSD or you know, TIFF or whatever you like to work off of. In this case, we're gonna work on a 16-bit file. The reason I'm gonna use 16-bit is simply because um, we've got a lot of gradation in our background here. And uh, when I was actually playing around with some of these files, I noticed that in 8-bit, uh, we were getting quite a bit of banding in this background. So um, you can take care of that banding with noise, but uh, I just rather not chance it and just work off a 16-bit file. We're not gonna be doing too much crazy processing on this anyway, so um, it, the file size won't be too bad. So just click export there. It's gonna take a little bit of time to chug through this. And uh, once it does, it's just gonna open up Photoshop for us. All right, so we've got our image inside of Photoshop. Uh, so we really are not gonna do a lot of editing on this image. I mean, again, it's a test look, so we wanna keep it nice and simple. So a uh, couple of simple things that I would do here is maybe just going through with the healing brush and just kind of picking up anything that we may want to uh, remove. So we can see down here on our seamless, we have a couple of little things. So we're just gonna use a healing brush to get rid of some of that stuff. Just sampling away. Just make sure that you're on a new layer and you're uh, sampling current and below. And so we're just gonna kinda quickly go through, get rid of all that stuff. When you're working with uh, seamless paper, you know, just, just verify that it's, it's pretty clean. Uh, it's worth cutting a piece if it's really dirty and just uh, working off a clean sheet. Otherwise you can spend a really long time just uh, fixing little things like this. So, um, you know, with this kind of image here, uh, everything's looking pretty clean. Uh, again, that was kind of our goal when we actually shot this, was to produce an image that's not gonna require a whole lot of editing. So um, 
We could make some minor adjustments here. Uh, one thing I've noticed is that we've got a little bit of a mismatch in terms of uh, tones. So we have the stomach here is a little bit more saturated than the arm. So we're going to do a quick fix there. And uh, what I'd like to do for that is let's just first merge down this um, layer over here so that we've got those fixes in. And we're going to go into our color picker and we're just going to see what that difference is. So if we click on the arm, we can kind of see that we're ending up somewhere in and around this area in terms of uh, saturation. So in saturation, we're going left and right, and we can see we're almost in the middle here. Uh, in terms of luminosity, up and down, we're sort of nearer to the top, and then for the hue, we can see that uh, we're sort of between red and orange here. So if we click down on her stomach, we're going to see what's happening. So actually, the saturation level is the same. It's slightly darker, but really you can see that shift in hue. So if you look at this little slider here, if we click on her arm, it nudges way up. So there's a difference basically in only hue. The, hue. the saturation itself is okay, but we need to fix the hue difference. So we're gonna do that, and then we're actually gonna color grade the image. So we're gonna create a group here called color. We're gonna create another group inside of that called correction, just to stay organized. And we're gonna just use a simple hue saturation adjustment. So opening up hue saturation, we're gonna pick reds from our drop down here, and we're just gonna sample the red color on her stomach. Uh, which is pretty representative of what's going on with her legs as well. So now that we've kind of narrowed down on this orangey red tone, what we know we need to do is we need to turn it more orange as opposed to being more red. So if we want to make it more orange, we're going to slide to this side here. We're going to slide to the right. Uh, and, you know, it's kind of a judgment call of how far we need to go with this. So I'm going to start at about plus four, and then we'll see how that's looking. And if we need to add more, then we certainly will. So let's just uh, hit Command I, Control I, and we're just going to mask that all out. And then we're just going to grab a brush with about a 10% flow. And in terms of hardness, you know, keep it relatively soft, but not too soft, because we want to be somewhat precise here. And we're just going to brush in to this area here. And we should be okay. We don't have to be too careful here, just because we have constrained it to oranges only. So uh, we shouldn't really see the background changing too much. So as we kind of brush this down, you notice the color changing a bit. And um, I'm thinking it's a little bit too orange towards, or sorry, too green towards the bottom here. So we're going to just adjust it again once we mask this all in. Oftentimes it's easier to kind of visualize this once you've masked it in. So just kind of pick an arbitrary number, um, whatever you think is going to be a good starting point, and then mask it in and adjust again later. So here's our rough mask. Uh, you may want to spend a little bit more time just making this perfect. But again, you don't have to be too careful because the background shouldn't be affected since we're only affecting reds and oranges. So with that kind of masked in, we see that we're a lot closer if we just toggle before and after. Uh, you can see that redness is, is going away, but like I said, we're too green. So I'm going to go back into here, back into our reds, and we're just going to take this from plus, three, or plus four to plus three. Let's just nudge this down. So. Um, at plus three, I think it's looking pretty good. Again, you can do this either through opacity or just changing the actual value. So now that we got it at plus three, we can just sort of play with our opacity slider and see if that's helping as well. So I think it's good there at 85% and um, plus three as our hue shift. So everything matches up nicely now. And let's just go ahead and apply a little bit of color grading to this. So the first thing I'm going to do is just go into selective color. Now let's just see you know, if we want to play with some of the shadow color. So we're going to go into blacks. And generally, I tend to kind of play around with uh, these three sliders here. So we're going to see, does it look better with some cyan in it? Probably not. Um, better with some red? Also not really an improvement. So then we're going to move on to magentas. Uh, and oftentimes, magentas are good to try. Um, sometimes the blacks contain a little bit too much green, so we can offset that with magenta. So at plus one, I think that looks quite nice. And then again, with yellow, we can pull a little bit of yellow out of it and see how that looks. So I think at, at plus one, minus one, that's a nice starting point in our shadows. And then we're going to go into our highlights. So I'm just going to pick whites here. And then we're going to adjust cyan. So let's just see if it looks better with a little bit of a cyan tone to it. And in this case, you know, being a test look, I don't think we really want to go too crazy with that. So we're going to leave it. Uh, we can take away yellow or add a little bit of yellow. I might just add a little bit just to warm up the highlights. And I think that's a good starting point. And then we're going to create one more selective color adjustment for our skin tone. So for that, we're going to go into reds, and we're just going to adjust. So uh, this is really just a process where you, you explore and see what looks good. So we're going to nudge this. In this case, I'm taking away some of the reds in the red, because I, I just think there's too much of them. So um, plus six looks pretty good on cyan. 
maybe we'll take away a little bit of magenta. Actually, no, I think I'm gonna actually gonna add a little magenta. So plus two on magenta. In terms of yellows, I think again, it's feeling a little bit too yellow to me. So I'm gonna take away some of the yellows from the reds. And I think that's pretty good. And so next thing we're gonna do is just um, see if we can add a little bit more contrast to the image. So we're gonna go into uh, levels and we're just gonna darken our image down a little bit. We're gonna change the blend mode to multiply. That's gonna darken it even further. And then we're going to just take down the opacity quite drastically. So we're gonna go down to maybe around 15%, possibly more. Then we're gonna double click on the levels adjustment and we're just going to change some of our blend if options here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna constrain this just to the shadow area. So we're gonna just use this blend if slider here, adjust this so that it starts to clip off the highlights and then holding down alter option, we're gonna split this and that's gonna add just a lot of contrast to our image and look a little, a little bit more interesting. So toggling that on off, you can kind of see the difference that makes. Let's just lower our opacity a little bit. And then finally, I'm just going to change the saturation a bit. So let's just see if we need to desaturate some of these skin tones, because generally uh, we don't want them too saturated. So we're gonna go back in again into reds. We're gonna sample our skin tone and desaturate it. So you kind of just, again, go by instinct here what looks good. I think in terms of this image, probably around minus eight looks pretty nice. So let's just kind of toggle this on and off. And you can just see what we've done. It's pretty simple. Uh, we haven't really done anything too crazy. Haven't spent a lot of time. Um, in the full edit, we're gonna be doing some dodging and burning to this. Again, very light dodging and burning because it is a test look. So we wanna keep things looking nice and natural, but um, we're just basically gonna be using kind of the same concepts we did here, but we're gonna be building on top of them. And then as we go into editorial looks, portrait looks and beauty looks, uh, you're gonna see a ton more retouching. So we're gonna be going into more advanced concepts like frequency separation, uh, dodging and burning for healing. Uh, we're gonna be making the hair look really fantastic. So um, lots of great material uh, in the full edits to come. So here's our image again, just showing you the before and after. One of the big things you have to kind of be careful of in these kinds of images is just matching up those skin tones. You wanna make sure that you have nice consistency across the body. And uh, as you can see, it didn't take us too long. We just used our hue saturation adjustment, targeted the right color uh, and just masked that area in. So there's our edit again. And uh, hope you found this uh, quick tutorial useful. Again, check us out at rggedu.com for uh, more details on the course and uh, hope to see you there.